when I finally got that call, my heart stopped. Right. Because when I picked up the phone, they said that I made the team. I, I was so happy. Uh, I've been wanting this since I was a kid, going to a high competitive school where scouts and development is there, and I finally could have the opportunity. I What's up, everybody? AJ Galanti here. Welcome back. Talking Trash Podcast. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Big shout out to our sponsor, Club 93, supporters from day one. I'm going to put a link in the description. Make sure you hit up some of their new merch. They got some cool t-shirts out. But I am so excited. Guys, I am so excited for this interview because... You guys know at this point my story, a 17-year-old GM, all that good stuff. And I always pride, you know, I would always pride myself on scouting talent, even today, whether it's hockey, boxing, whatever. All that I love scouting talent. And we got a kid right now who I'm telling you, arguably already, is the greatest hockey player ever born and raised in Danbury, Connecticut, Scrap City's own. Our boy, 17-year-old. This I'm pumping your tires, bro. This kid is a phenom. <laughs> mark my words. Giovanni Smeriglio Paisan. How you doing, brother? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Man, this has been a long time in the making. Yes. All right. Yes. Now we connected. We connected. Um, it's funny how social media, man, it, it works. So I, I was doing a video with a videographer. Shout out to Troy Keegan, my boy. And um, we were talking. And he was showing me, you know, uh, he's like, yeah, I love filming hockey. And, and, and filming hockey is not easy, you no, know? No, definitely not. So no. he was showing me some videos, and he showed me this kid splitting the defense, <laughs> doing like a triple deke Mighty Duck style, <laughs> and like roofing the puck. And I'm like, who the hell is that kid? He goes, that's Giovanni. You don't know who Giovanni is? I'm like, no, I'm 38 years old. This is a you know, young kid. I don't know who Giovanni is. He's like, oh, that's Giovanni Spiriglio. He's a beast, blah, blah, blah. He's the future, this and that. And I'm like, okay. So I remember following you on uh, Instagram. You yep, followed me yep. back. And um, man, we're, we're going to get into your story. But Can't I mean, be. it's it's crazy how social media works. I didn't realize you, you know, you're from Danbury. You yeah. know, I started to learn about you. Um, went to school with my nephew, Justin. And uh, it's crazy, man. I mean, um, I guess the generic question is, I mean, you're 17 now. Yep. Turning 18 shortly. When did you start playing hockey? So you were born in 06, you said? 06, yeah. Man, I'm getting old. 06. <laughs> the last year of the Trashers, 2006. Wow. But, um, you know, what got you into hockey, man? Well, my dad played. Okay. And then when I was about three years old, he gave me a stick. Uh -huh. Fun fact, no one knows this, but I used to be a lefty. I started as lefty then yeah. when my dad was a righty. So when I really started growing into hockey and practicing, I actually switched to righty. And uh -oh. I, I wish I was saying. Are lucky. you ambidextrous? Could you go both ways? Pause, not like that. I mean, could you go? <laughs> can you can you um, shoot lefty and righty? <laughs> yeah. Not probably not as good. Yeah. But when I play sports, I'm right. But when I eat right, homework, everything left. So it's it's it's. So yeah. when I started playing hockey, okay, there was no Danbury Ice Arena. Yeah. Hockey was not existed in Danbury. I saw the Mighty Ducks in '92, '93, whenever it came out. My mom took me to Sports Authority by the mall. <laughs> And I got a, they asked me, you know, what are you, lefty or right? I said righty because I write with my right hand. Yeah. So they gave me a righty stick. But I was holding it like a lefty. So <laughs> I was playing street hockey. My my strong hand was my back. I was shooting with a, I'm like, why do I suck so bad? You know what I'm saying? And it's uh, weird how with hockey, I try to explain to people, it's weird how many people say, yeah, I'm really a righty, but I shoot lefty and yeah. vice versa. But that that's crazy. You're, where'd your dad play? You, um just men's league. Yeah, yeah that's he, awesome. He he loved hockey. Since like, yeah. my uncle, he played hockey with him. They played together then just. Yeah, that's awesome. It's in the blood. in the family tradition. That's so. in the blood, man. Yeah. You know, it's so it's so awesome because yeah, I was just talking about this with someone. You know, you were born in 06. You know, hockey was just starting to really become big here in Danbury. And you're from Danbury. Like I said, right. I mean, this is a Scrap City kid. I mean. People don't realize, you know, hockey, and your dad probably knows if he's been around. I've said, I mean, it wasn't a big thing when I was young. And oh. now it's like, it's insane, you know. Especially you know, talent, too. I mean, talent. you go, I mean, I'm at the arena. Oh, by the way, well, I'll get to the shout-out. I got to shout-out your boys, the 16U team. But uh, it, it's crazy how much talent is out there today in Danbury. I'm just so proud to watch it grow, and, and we're going to get to why I believe you're the greatest, as of right now, Danbury-born <laughs> hockey player. But you. growing up, 
I, I think you said it, but I'll give you a chance to change your mind. Who was your favorite NHL team growing up? Rangers. New York Rangers. Uh, you can't, it has man, to be oh, the man. Rangers. Well, whatever, Come on. whatever. Come on. You know, it's New Jersey Devils for me, and, and the reason I'm a Devils fan is that was the first game I went to, 94. And thank God I seen three Stanley Cups. I was there live in 03 for their Stanley Cup. You guys got your one little dinky cup in 95. <laughs> it was, you weren't even alive, but you guys do have my boy Matt Rempe. <laughs> People who watch this show, they I talk about Matt Rempe almost every episode. I love this guy. Um, who's your favorite player growing up? Did you have a guy that you you really enjoyed watching? Yeah, I mean, my he's not on the Rangers, though, so it's a little, little twist. Yeah. But Jack Eichel. Oh, yeah. I actually met Jack Eichel when I was a kid. Really? Yeah, he had uh, this thing at UMass Lowell, and I went to it, and I actually played with him. I have his picture with him and the autograph. Yeah, he I since he played on Boston University. Yeah. Uh, when he played on uh, Boston Little Bruins, Junior Bruins. Yeah. I followed him from there over to the Buffalo Sabres, Vegas. I, when did you personally get on skates? Like, when did you? When do you were old. Wow, exactly three. three. Yeah. Wow, three years old, man. I can't imagine. I mean, my son just turned two, and I'm starting to feel the pressure to get him on skates. You might have to coach him on that. I, I can't <laughs> believe they even make skates that small. But, yeah, uh, my dad just said, you know what? He didn't want to waste time. <laughs> he just, I was doing a uh, learn to skate. Yes. And the first day I did it, my dad was like, they're not really teaching you. So he took yeah. me off that. He taught me himself. And ever since I stepped on the ice, just history how, was made. How great is that to have that bond with your father? I mean, obviously, I'm very close with my yeah. father. And, um, you know, I'm in the boxing world, too. And I see so many. There's so many boxers where there's father-son teams. And a lot of the fathers who were the trainers used to box as well and stuff like that. So how cool is that to share that, you know, uh, bond with your dad and you know, have him part of your support system. It's, it's awesome, you know. Having someone that knows the game of hockey, yeah. then having him teach me at a young age, it, you know, it's a good connection. Is it tough sometimes, though? Because I grew up, my dad and I, we're a tag team. Everything I do, my dad's involved and vice versa through, you no. know, my whole life. But people don't understand, and you probably understand it, people don't understand how tough father-son teams can be sometimes, no, right? I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm just going to tell the streets. It's, <laughs> it's a journey. Yeah. A lot of ups and downs, you know, a lot of fights, a lot of disagreements, but at the end of the day, you know. Nah, listen, there's nothing. It, it's going to bond you guys yeah. forever. I mean, me and my dad now, I mean, I'm 38. My dad's 70. My dad looks younger than me, and he's 72 <laughs> years old, but he— um, you know, you have your ups and downs, but yeah. as you get older, it's just like, man, it's just like that bond, you know, is incredible. What's your dad's name? William. William. Shout yeah, out to Billy, though. Shout out to Big Billy, man. Yes. The Big Billy, uh, man, he's got some good DNA because uh, let's talk a little bit. So, so you just kind of, you know, I looked at your elite prospects, right? I mean, for the whole, for those that don't know, that's kind of like the end all be all for these kids and, and players. You can check their stats and yeah. everything. And, you know, I grew up, it was just hockeydb.com. Now you got elite <laughs> prospects and everything. I mean, dude, you've just steamrolled. And I, and listen, you're very humble. I wouldn't have had you on this show if I didn't think you were a humble guy. Yeah, I and I know you can't, you know, say too much and stuff, but man, I'll say it for you. You are a phenom, man. I mean, I'm looking at your stats and all the teams you played for, and it's like, What's interesting to me is it's one thing when you're on just one team forever and you're putting up stats, yeah. but you you just keep elevating, elevating, and no I matter where it. you go, the stats are following you. I mean, um, just like this, like how much work goes. I mean, people don't realize for an athlete like how much work goes into like I, your craft, man. There's a lot. I mean, I feel like I should be putting more work in. Has, yeah, but it, it's it's a lot. It's, it's a commitment. My dad just says a job. You know, it is. It's, it's literally a job. So all the hard sweat and tears you just got to so, really put in it. So let's talk about where you are currently. You are in South Kent, okay? And, again, I would have never sniffed this school growing up, <laughs> being able to play. I did a little research. Um, this school is, like, unreal. I mean, I was oh, yeah. I was actually literally taken back looking at their website. And we'll put a link in the description um, for all you young players out there who want to take a look. This school is top of the line. And their alumni, I mean, you would tell me before we um, started recording, like, you see the banners in the rink. I mean, all, like, the pros, the D1 commits, all these guys have come through South Kent. Yeah. I mean, I guess talk to me a little bit. When did South Kent become on your radar or vice versa? Did they reach out to you? Or how, how, so how does it work? I've been, I knew about South Kent since I was a kid. You know, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really know how to approach it when I was about 15 when you know travel team and scouting really came along 
but I always wanted to go there. Then there's one day, I um, last year actually, I played or not even this year, I played at South Kent Arena versus um, this uh, this other team, high school team, and the 18 new prep coach was there, mm-hmm. and he asked about me and wanted to know who I was. Then six months down the road, uh, my agent reached out and got the did a tryout and. What's the coach's name? Um, Andre. And who's your agent? We got to shout out your agent. Cliff, man. Cliff. Shout out agent Cliff. CKM, CKM okay. CKM. Yes, listen, I, I'm in the boxing world. I kind of work as an agent with fighters. I know how important that is. We'll put a link in the description for them, too, for all you players that, you know, listen, it's important, and we'll get to it later. Like, I tell, try to tell people about your support system. Like, you have to build early nowadays in athletics. If you want to go somewhere, you need agents, scouts, you know, right. your support. I mean, it's crazy, man. But, yeah, South Kent, I mean, is the real deal. So now you're playing 18U uh, AAA. Uh, by the way, I, I I had to write this down immediately. So last night, you know, we're recording, obviously. Last night I went to a um, North American Hockey League uh, junior hat tricks game. I was in the lobby. I was grabbing something to eat. And a, a group of kids came over and were talking to me. And uh, I asked them, you know, if they played. And they said, yeah, we go to South Kent. And I was like. This was last night, and I was like, oh, um, you know Giovanni? They're like, oh, Giovanni, we love Giovanni. He's a beast, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was like, yeah, well, he's coming on tomorrow to record. And they're like, what? And they were they were freaking out, and they were like, oh, tell him we said hi. I wish I got their names, but I got to give a shout-out, too, because I'm a man of my word. South Kent 16U AAA team, all right? Um they had, they had a big kid, too. I was like, holy, these kids are huge now. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? They, they I was have like, some heavy bodies. I forget where yeah. he said who he's from. He's from, I think he, they said this kid's from Europe or something. Or I was like, man, but, you know, let people know who don't understand. Because, look, bro, I played in-house hockey. I played high school hockey in New Fairfield. I didn't play high-level hockey. I mean, South Kent, there are people from all over the world literally yeah. trying to get into this school. I mean, some of your teammates, you, I mean, you were telling me they're from all over, right? Correct. Yeah, they're from Montreal, Czech, Russia, Bacchia, yeah, everywhere. It, it's 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 crazy, crazy. and yeah. um, I mean it, it's it's so crazy to watch. And and I was I didn't get a chance to look. I want to I got to get to a game. I, I want to catch you in action, man, because I never seen you as of yet play. But let's go to the gram, right? Everything is Instagram nowadays. I know hockey players are a little more modest than other athletes, but I was scoping your gram out. I even went on YouTube, and you have a sick highlight reel. We got to put that in the description too, man. You make those highlights, or yeah, uh, I actually do. Yeah, one of my um, my really close friend, shout out Louie, he actually made it for me. Shout out Louie, man. That yeah, because I was watching one where it started like with a countdown. There was like a TV screen yeah. or something. That was yeah. sick, man. I mean, dude, it's like obviously, and I've dealt with all types of athletes, boxers, hockey players, whoever, and and really, like you said, it's the work you put in. But there was there are some guys that I say have the it factor and like God given talent, dude. Your like your vision, man. Like I'm watching some of these moves you make, and it's like I couldn't imagine having the vision you have, the speed you have. Like, where do you think that comes from? Is that God gifted? I mean, you don't you don't have to say it's God gifted, but no, I, I'm I telling mean, you, some of the stuff you do is is truly God gifted to me. I mean, when since I started playing, I kind of taught myself different variation moves. You ask my parents, the more. Time I spent just stick hailing outside, shooting, looking up YouTube videos, practicing inside the house. That's every day I did that. And just when I grew older, new moves came out and just I just kept on practicing. Now it came it comes natural where if I see a D, say I'm on the outside, crosses over, I'm going to inside. Yeah. It's all about reading. I'm just, I don't know. I just, I'm just used to reading the defenseman so well now. It just comes second nature. I quick reaction. So You said something that's so crazy to me and in a good way. You know, I didn't grow up with this, but YouTube, right? How important, like, dude, I learned how to, like, <laughs> I had an issue, like, two years ago with my toilet, and instead of calling a plumber, I YouTubed <laughs> it and figured it out. Dude, I learned how to tie a tie through YouTube. How crazy <laughs> is YouTube, man? And, like, you know, it's like, you know, you're you know, you're born in 06, you're, you're turning 18 shortly. Like, YouTube's been a part of your life, man. I mean, I don't think, you know, people in my generation understand, like, how useful YouTube is. I mean, the stuff you can study, like, at a moment's notice, I mean, it's, it's it's so cool to see young players such as yourself, you know, really credit YouTube a lot, you know? No, yeah, I mean, YouTube helps in many ways. Scouting, yeah, it's a video that could go viral, and look at your, t- yeah, trending. Yeah, um, I mean, it's 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 so important. I try to tell these, you, you know, especially hockey players, because it's such a modest sport. Guys are supposed to be modest. It's like you got to put yourself out there. Correct. And uh, 
I like that you do just enough. Like you don't overdo it and you don't like it's not like you're not doing it. Like you you got really a lot going on, whether you're doing it on your own, you have people guiding you, you're really doing it the right way. Um let's talk about South Ken for a minute. Okay. Um you know, you already you have some points going up. I mean, how long I like when's your when's your season end usually typically? Uh we have a close to uh sixty game schedule. Yeah, it's five. a it's so a it's, it's a, a grind, yeah. man. What's your normal day like? So a lot of people don't know yeah. it's um yeah. You know, guys are living, you know, boarding there, right? Yeah. Like, you like, um, you said you commute, right? Like, commute, yeah, 25 minutes. So, yeah, it's, it's, all back road. it's such a man, what a perfect situation for you and your family. Uh, that's amazing. But, you know, what's it like for you or your teammates? Like, what's a day in the life at South Kent like for those that don't know? Because, again, guys, this is a high level school with high level players, big time academics. I mean, you can't skate at a school like this. This isn't like when I went to school, you try to just <laughs> skate to get by, no pun intended. Like what's it what's like an everyday yeah. life for you? Well actually funny you said that day in a life. Shout out True Crew. I'm actually doing a day in a life at South Kent. It's coming Yes, soon. yes. Shout so, out True. You know, uh yeah man, that's that's it's, that's it's awesome. But yeah, I mean every um every Monday it's we have chapel day. Okay. So we all dress in our South Kent uh, vest yeah. and we go chapel. We have off days Monday, so that's good. Hang out with the whole community, teachers, yeah. faculty, staff, everything. But Tuesday through Friday is just school after school, right? Practice, workout. We yeah. have an awesome trainer. Shout out Coach, uh, Coach Bonus. He's really, really puts us to work. It's, you know, I, I've Again, I've been, I I was out of hockey so long after the Trashers, which ended the year you were born, which yeah. is sick to think about. And I was so out of the game. And, um, you know, again, when I played, I wasn't a high-level player. So I wasn't I, – I didn't understand, like, these schools or junior yeah. hockey, how big it is, college hockey. And it's like, dude, it is it is a full-time job for you guys. It and and, it and, really and it's not – like, not anyone could just get into South Kent. So, like, for you to get, like, you know, to get in, I mean – How'd that feel, especially for like your parents, your father? I mean, that that had to be an emotional moment. No, yeah. Man. When um when I had the tryout, I um I was just looking at my phone, getting an email, getting a call. When I finally got that call, my heart stopped. Right. Because when I picked up the phone, they said that I made the team. I, I was so happy. Uh, I've been wanting this since I was a kid, going to a high competitive school where scouts and development is there, and I finally could have the opportunity. I got. I was so happy. Well, I probably, you know, this this shows you I'm not a broadcaster. I try. I probably should have started the episode with this. But <laughs> what's your goals, man? I mean, I know that's yeah. that's a loaded question, but you know, I always tell guys, I always feel like you got to have one big overall goal and a couple mini goals, like yeah. checkpoints to hit. Like what? What's like? I mean, what's what's your overall, overall like? Goal? Is it to make the NHL? Is it to is it is? I know for a lot of people, it might seem far off, but is that like the ultimate for you? I'll, I'll break it down like this: the ultimate goal, dream goal, is the NHL. Yes, but before doing that, my dream goal is the US, USHL. Okay, that's my dream goal. I've always wanted to go. So USHL, play. for those that don't know, is the top of the top Correct. junior hockey. I mean that that is that is literally. And they got some great jerseys. I, I I'm big on getting jerseys, so <laughs> yeah. I need a I need a smir- <laughs> I need a Smiriglio <laughs> jersey wherever you end up in the USA. But um, that's that's uh, you got the right head on your shoulders. Cause a lot of guys they just start with that ultimate goal, and uh, but you got to get there first. So yeah. you know. Is there like a USHL team when you were younger you used to follow or like or any um, that just sticks out to you Chicago at all? Chicago Steel. That's probably that's the one. That's a sick. That's, that's a the sick one name. That I really followed. But any any. Shout out to USHL. Any team that wants Hey, out, USHL, listen, this kid is the truth, okay? And whatever USHL team takes a chance on his kid, you know, you get the trasher backing, man. That'll be my <laughs> unofficial. Uh, that'll it. be no, that not that'll be the official trasher USHL team. So you listen, you're on the way, man. I mean, um right. it, it's it's uh it's it's crazy because when I grew up, like I said, it this these things weren't like possible for kids in Danbury playing. And yeah. like here you are. Born and raised in Danbury. I mean, uh, you went to Great Plain, right? Correct, where you met my yes. cousin. Shout out to Justin Gonzalez. So, uh, do you play anything else, or just was it just hockey? I played hockey for a majority of my life, then lacrosse for about three three years, and I kind of kind of talked to myself where hockey's more important to me. Yeah. So I want to focus all my attention on hockey. So I kind of 
left lacrosse in the past. And yeah. Now I'm just strictly hockey only. Well, you're right because you get to a certain age where you kind of have to choose, right? And Correct. it's good, and it's a good thing that you had other experiences with. Um, you know, other sports, because a lot of times guys from like three years old, it's just hockey, 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 and they burn oh, out. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was nice, you know, doing new sports. I can meet new people. Yeah. You know, it's 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 crazy. You a video game guy? Were you a video game guy yeah. growing up or yep. were you too busy training or a no, little mix I'm of both? I'm not going to lie. I was a video game guy. What's your game? Are you a sport game guy? Are you like a Call of Duty Fortnite guy? Because I, I was a sport. Look, at, I just played. Look. Back in our day, yeah. we had controls with two buttons. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like we played Super Mario and Mario Kart. But, you know, as I got older, I was always a sport game guy. Yeah. Like, Justin and them, they always try to get me to play Call of Duty or Fortnite, and I get killed in two seconds. What, what's, your, what's your game? So, back in the, when I was a little young, really young, I was big in WWE. Oh, well, so listen, now, we're, now we're talking. You're a WWE guy. Yep. Roman Reigns was my favorite WWE oh, star. Oh, my God. Favorite. Listen. We got a big. You still watch wrestling or no? No, I you don't. fell off. I Dude. fell off when I got. When I It'll hit be back 15, in 16. Listen, no, no, no. Same with me, but give it a few more years, bro. You're going to be back into WWE. I watch three, four times a week still. My wife loves that, by the way. I still watch wrestling. Dude, there's a big pay per view on tonight, actually. That's why really? I'm going to see Justin. But Roman Reigns is the top guy right him. now. And uh, he's, he's awesome. But those games favorite. are the best. I remember, man, I remember when. Uh, you know, in like the late '90s, they started really putting out some good wrestling games. Man, that's that's fun. Yeah, wrestling. WWE 2K was the main game, but yeah, NHL. Then when Fortnite came out, Fortnite dominated. But I've been playing Call of Duty a lot recently. Man, it's your generation. I can't play. It. It's too. It's too real to me. Like you guys are switching <laughs> scopes and guns. I don't know what I'm going. They set me up. They put me in. I die within, uh, you know, three seconds. I'm not that good. I'll say that. I'm not that good. I Listen, we may have, and you know, it's funny because we, you know, we're living in the world of content. I wanted to start doing some video game content. We might have to play WWE against each other. Hey, I will be the Undertaker, and you could be Roman Reigns, and we'll we'll see what happens. Hey, I'll man. say this: I'd have never lost first my friends, so you might. <laughs> oh, okay. So, but you know. But I'm gonna I, listen. I'm a competitive like you. I'm gonna practice a little because it's been okay, a while with okay. WWE. So we we're gonna have maybe uh, a best of tournament or something like that. That'll be I that'll know. be fun. Yeah, WWE is life, man. I it's uh, that was my first love was wrestling. Then yeah. came hockey. But um, you know, getting a little more serious, man. <clears throat> One thing you know, I know what it's like to have pressure and to feel pressure. And a lot of people, I feel like you kids today have way more pressure than we had. I mean, I had a lot of pressure growing up with certain things, but between social media and all this stuff, and you're looking to do big things. You're not looking right. to, you're not looking to just, you know, you know, whatever. Like, how do you deal, like, do you feel the pressure? And if so, like, what do you deal, like, what, what where do you, like, what pressure do you feel? Is it from, you know... Like, I was always, I don't want to disappoint my family. That was yeah, always my number one thing. And it's like, um, you know, my yeah. family would always say, you could never disappoint us. You're our son. We no, love you. Yeah. But, like, where, like, do you feel the pressure? Because uh, every every time I step on the ice, even when I'm out of the, off, out of the rink, you know, whatever happens from outside the rink, I'd still, you know, still, it's a lot. You know, I my mom, my biggest supporter, I do everything for her. My dream is to make it to the NHL so I could... Give back all the money she spent on traveling in the hotels. And you got to shout out the moms. People don't mom, realize yeah. what moms and, and, you know, all parents, but there's something, you know, and, and you are the youngest kid. Correct, yeah. And you're Italian. I know. So I'm the oldest. So you're the prince. You're the baby prince. <laughs> Spoiled prince, yes. And, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm envious of that. Um, I just have one sister. She's younger than me. I still think I'm the favorite, but whatever. <laughs> but you being the youngest boy. I mean, uh, you're the prince, right? Yeah. I mean, you're the apple of your parents' eyes. I'm sure all your other siblings are too, but you, you're you the one, man. So there's a lot of pressure on your shoulders, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, it's more about just, I don't want to disappoint them, you know, putting all the hard work and money into having me go to South Kent and just all the other tier one teams. I really just want to make it just for, not just for them, for myself, so I can look back. And say, and I really, my really, my main goal is to make it and tell the little kids my story. Yeah, I don't. I don't ha it didn't come easy for me. You know? No, it started, it, especially when you said Danbury. It's not a lot of talent here. It's not a lot of not a lot of people. Know not a lot of homegrown. Exactly. And so. it's 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 weird. It's like cultures clashing. Yeah. You know, because you know, my dad had the vision to start pro hockey in Danbury. 
No one thought it was possible. No, it can't happen in Danbury. We made it happen. It was just two seasons, but we planted such a seed. And now you're seeing the benefits of that seed. And someone like you, I mean, who knows if there's a Danbury Arena years ago. You know what I mean? And, like, here you come, and and it's, like, it's special because you're one of many, like, roots that have come through, like, a lot of these seeds that's been planted and you're you're taking the ball and running with it, man, and, and it, it's it's awesome to see. And uh, yeah, man, it, it's great because I, I always tell people I, I when we lost the trash, it was like a breakup. I didn't want to have anything to do with hockey, nothing. I hated hockey, and then this documentary comes out, fall back in love. I, people watch it like AJ. You say this every episode, but there's a reason why. Now I'm like, how do I give back more? Like you, yeah. like. And uh, we will, man. We just got to keep giving back. and Day by day. That's, that's, a, that's my thing. Day by day. Danbury's a special place, and we got yeah. a, a great culture here. Not a lot of people have that type oh. of culture. And uh, we got some big things coming down the chute that, you know, you got to be part of, too. And, uh, man, it, it's be, awesome. I mean, how do you – what do you say to athletes out there that, that you know um, – want to follow in your footsteps or athletes that like how do you manage the stress is there something you yeah. do that um, that helps you with the pressure i mean i always always go back to god you know i he's a person i talk to a lot so yeah. I just take a moment to myself to just relax and just pray to him and he has a path for me so i just follow in his footsteps but another thing is that family and friends i really rely on them cause they're my biggest supporters so if i'm struggling with just say scoring goals or have a mental block I go back to the my roots where it all started so that's where I kind of I kind of let the stress go out one year go out the other I don't want to put too much stress on myself because it's going to mess my game up it it is and it's like you know someone like you know I'm I was never a high level athlete such as yourself so I've I've been on different ends of sports but I've always wondered especially a young kid you're probably the youngest guest we've ever had on here and and it's like just dealing with like that, ex, you know, the expectations and and, and it's it's got to be it's it's tough, man. You know what I mean? And uh, no, mental um, toughness is is where it's at. You know, I mean, you could be as physically tough as you want, but if you don't have the mental, you're not you're not going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, there's kids that are my age that are, are in college or USHL that have the skill and have the mentality, and there's kids that are my age I look up to. Yeah, you know, because. Where they're at, I want to be there too. But it's 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 a lot. Do you find yourself ever comparing yourself? Like, you know, I think it's impossible this day and age. Like, even for someone like me, like we got our show here. Um, I feel our show is really good. I feel yeah. like, and then I look at the ranking. Sometimes I'm like, how is this show better than us? You know oh, what I mean? Do you day. find yourself like? And I'm older than you. I'm, I'm 20 years older than you. Like, do you find yourself ever, like, just being, like, is it hard to not, in this day and age with social well, media and yeah. everything? I mean, like you said, I'm a competitive person. So when I see someone that's up there and just say they're getting drafted to 2025, your number top five, why am I not up there? So yeah. let me find a way so I can get myself up there. Yeah. That's, that's, like, the mentality I go with every time I step on the ice, even when I'm working out. Try Always try to find a way so I could be that next prodigy and i'm still trying to work up there it's hard a lot of kids have you know connections and this and that I, i'm from danbury and from a culture where i don't have yeah. connections that other kids have so it's more work to put in but i'm willing to put that work in well know? that's what i love to hear man because a lot of guys where i see them fail i see it with a lot of boxers i work with like they compare themselves and instead of having the mentality you have of okay well how do i get there now yeah. They kind of shut down a little, and it, and it's you see that in all sports, but it's good to see, man. You 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 got the you're on your way, man. I'm telling you, I like appreciate um, it. I appreciate it. you just gotta keep going, bro. And you you have the support system, you know, all the sacrifices family made. I mean, it's it, it's awesome, man. It is. Who right now on your team? Who's got the best shot? If you had to say who has <laughs> the best the shot? Spot. Yeah, oh, wow. I like to do that. It's like a pop quiz. Okay, best shot. All right, how about I make it a little easy for you? Coach okay. says, hey, guys, you know what? You guys, you know, it's on Giovanni. Giovanni has to pick someone, including himself, okay. to score on this shootout. You guys score, you go home, you're off for the week, go have you live your life, have fun. You got, you guys, you, if, if whoever Giovanni picks, you know, he gets stopped, you guys are doing like, I don't know, 100 laps or whatever. Okay. You know what I mean? Just, just dog work, bag skate. Who are you picking? I can't pick myself. You can pick yourself. <laughs> I can pick myself. 
I'm gonna be confident. I'm confident in myself, so I, w- I would pick myself. But if I couldn't, I would do a shout out to my teammate James Lou. James Lou, James okay, Lou. you got the co-sign from Lou, Big yes. Giovanni, man. So yeah, I mean, I love doing that. I did that with Frank Vitrano here from the Ducks recently. Yeah. I, I was like, dude, who, who do you who do you say? I think he says Zegras, okay, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I think he says Zegras. But uh, no, that that's awesome, man. I mean. Uh, so, I mean, you said, like, a lot of your teammates are from Montreal and, and like, Correct. what's, like, the furthest? Like, was someone from, was anyone from, like, Russia or anything out there? Yeah, or? we have a couple from Russia, um, Slovakia, I believe. Yeah. It's, it's all, I keep, it's all over. And they live there, obviously. They board yeah, there and I stuff mean, like that. Yeah, There's, we have so much out of, like, Europeans out of the U- U.S. where we can't, uh, we can't go to, like, the natties and nationals because there's a... a Rule against it. Gotcha. So yeah, you need a certain amount. Yeah, yeah. So we have so many from the 15s all the way to the. Yeah, 18th, there's kids from all over. Oh, it, man. It's actually pretty cool. Cause I never knew these, you know, other places and the, these kids coming. It's in. a it's, listen. You're sick. basically home. You're only traveling 25 no, minutes, yeah. but it's a culture shock because you're. I remember when I went to school at Manhattanville College, only 40 minutes away. I mean, you're meeting kids from all over, and you right. learn a lot through people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 18, you like. The teams below you. Is there anyone coming up the system that you that you know that maybe you think Scott, you know, it could be next up or, or got a future? I mean, they um, listen. Obviously, if you go to South Kent, everyone's got some sort of future. But is there someone a couple rungs below the eighteen U team that I you mean, got your eye on? Uh, I mean, from the fifteen to sixteen, these kids are talented. Yeah, you know, South Kent picks the best of the best. Yeah, it's very hard to. Uh, Catch the coach eye and let him really evaluate you. So a lot of these kids have something special. I feel like from I'll say the sixteens, there's a lot of sixteen kids that are crazy, good. insane, right? They have skills that are better than me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like you're sixteen How? years old. How, How do you, you know? But I feel like from the fifteen to the eighteen, everyone is there for a reason. Yeah, everyone has similar ways. Yeah. So I feel like everyone is kind of developing up to be a come up yeah you know saying? it's kind of hard saying oh, i know it's hard to pick one. right yeah but you know i could i couldn't tell you uh, that's good though man but you. but no I, it's always interesting when you you know again like i i gotta catch you playing in the game but i it's crazy because i never was exposed to these type of schools and just how much talent is there and it's like it's yeah. kind of cool to like um it's almost like a professional system you know you got the minor league teams and the pro like Correct. you see who gets to move up you know it's it's interesting you know i'm one day you're playing with your linemate, then he gets called up, and yeah. it's just like, wow. Like You look back, hey, I used to play with him. Now, he's now when you the, say called up, where do some of these guys go? USHL. There's yeah. a kid from the 16s. Uh, his name is Jude. Shout out Jude. He's Cedar Rapids. They called him up. So wow. He's there. Yeah. So Man, that's amazing. You're on your yeah. way, man. Hey, Chicago, you heard what he said. So listen, <laughs> it's a cool city, too. A lot of Italians out there, too. So you'll fit right in over there. Perfect, perfect. Hey, listen, you got any pregame rituals? Yeah, because hockey players. I mean, I remember even I didn't play high level, but yeah. I had my little rituals here and there. What what what, what pre game rituals? I listen, listen to music, but um, South Ken has a rule: there's no music. Uh huh. So it's all no about, music. No music. Only one person could play the ox, so everyone has to listen to. It. It's actually at first I was like, oh whoa, but yeah. It kind of makes us bond and yeah, it's lock true. In better. It does but, make sense. You know what I mean? Not everyone's in their individual correct, ways. You know what I mean? I tape my stick after every period, after every practice, yeah. before the game. Usually I come in, my suit on, I change it to my uh, dry clothes, tape my stick right away. Then I visualize a game, how to score, what the plays, kind of, kind of just scan the ice. Yeah. So that's mostly what I do every every game. Now, even if it wasn't at South Kent right now and you're just new in this yeah. new school, but, like, you got, like, a goal that sticks out in your career that you just are like, that's my highlight right now. Like, do you have that certain yeah. goal in your in your um, career? Last last year, when I played BBDI, that was probably the best year I ever played in hockey. I accomplished so much as just an individual having 100 points. Yeah, in my that's career insane, man. In just two years. Yeah. It was, it was very awesome. Then winning SWCs. Yeah. Then bringing the team out to the state finals. Unfortunately, we lost, but having a fan system, yeah, it, it was just an unreal, unreal year. I, oh, if I man. could go back, I would go back. That's great, man. I mean, listen, those are those are these are all like those building blocks that you yeah. always remember, and, and it's you, you know, you're, you're making. I always tell guys, you gotta make vertical moves, not have a horizontal. And you're making the vertical moves. We talked that. a little bit about this, um, you know, before we started recording. Are you a chirper? 
Cause you're a very humble guy, but you got some swag too. You got to, you know, um, as a kid say, you got a little riz to you. Like you're a little chirper. <laughs> you, you, you chirp at all. I kind of let the game speak for itself. <laughs> there you go. If someone's chirping me. I kind of next shift I go out and score. So yeah. I try to keep calm. I'm not, I'm not a good chirper. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really bad at it. So yeah. I, I kind of let the game speak for itself. You think you're tar? You, I mean, listen, everyone in South Camp. Is I mean maybe before you got to South Cam, I mean you, when you were playing like you said BDI or whatever, like you think you had a target on your back? Did people Every, chirp yeah. you? Oh, a ton, <laughs> tons, <laughs> tons. Yeah, um, I've gotten so many chirps. I don't even remember how. <laughs> Every game, I, all the time. It's tough having a target on your back, but it's what you do when that target's on your I back. I mean, yeah. I mean, when I last year we played Newtown rivalry game. Yeah. Tri got triple team every time. Yeah, but I what I do is I adapt. So I find a way to. Oh, these three kids are always, you know, guarding me. What do I? What can I do, to move around them? Yeah, I always try to adapt to the other team and find ways to stand out. So scouts and coaches would be like, okay, this kid's going always on his back, and now when they're used to that, I'm going my forehand. Yeah, so I always got psych. It's like a mind game. I yeah. So it's a Rubik's cube, man. Yeah. It's like you, you got it. You, you find it. like the greats in any sport, but like you said, you, your visualization, it's, it's like, you could see it. Like you just see it before it happens. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, now I talk to a lot of players, pros, whatever. And uh, we always talk about chirping and stuff like that. And most guys, most guys like, yeah, you know, I let it roll off my back. Or like you said, I'll just go score the next shift. But everyone I talk to, and you don't have to say it. But everyone I talk to, I'm always like, yeah, but is there that one chirp that just struck a nerve? Like, got you. Is there, like, is there anyone, oh. like, like off the top of your head, you know? Because you got to give shout out to someone who could really, like, as focused as you are, as great of a player you are, for someone to get under your skin to the point where you could remember a chirp, I feel like you got to give them a little accolades. Do, is there anyone off the top of your head that you think you know, got to you. <laughs> you, you <laughs> it's hard because when I played um, Connor last year, they did the overrated chant. Mm. And when I laugh at it, yeah, because like they're like, you're, you're my fan. You call me overrated. Yeah, you yeah. Of, you have to know me. Yes. So like, I, it's hard. A lot, like, there's some chirps don't really get to me. It's yeah. More about a chirp happens and I miss a breakaway. That's when I get mad. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, Dang, that's my one time to shut them up. <laughs> but I kind of laugh when people chirp me because, like, who are you? Yeah, like, yeah, you're, exactly. You're chirping me, so you got to be a fan of me. You know? but, <laughs> That's a good way to see it because, yeah. uh, you know, I talk to guys, and even when we're done recording, they're like, you know, I didn't want to say it, but there was a chirp. And they'll tell me. They'll tell me the exact <laughs> game, the period, how much time was left. And it's funny, it's funny to think like yeah, that. No, Sometimes it'll catch you. What would you say as a player is your biggest strengths? As a me, speed. My speed, hands down, stands out. Yeah. As every coach says that every teammate, my speed carries. That's what, something that just came natural to me. You, you're scouting yourself, let's say. What's a weak, I wouldn't say a weakness. Let's say, no, let's, fine, yeah. let's say, let's say, let's say, what's, what's part of your game that you think you can work on or something you got to take to the next level? Would probably place in the puck when I shoot, learn how to read the goalie. Yeah. Um, yeah. My really good best friend, Jack, he's a goalie. He stops me every time. He can read me like a book. I can't. We probably go 20 shots. Uh -huh. I get, like, probably three in. Yeah. He reads me. I ask him, what can I do? To, yeah. And he tells me. I still, it just, reading the goalie, when to shoot and when not, just decision making a little bit. Yeah. Less stick handling. I get told I stick handle a little bit too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but more about pu pushing the puck and, you know, but other than that, yeah, just reading the goalie, less stick handling, a little bit quicker decisions, you know. Thinking the next step ahead. I remember um, I was watching something on, I think, TikTok where, forget what player, I don't know, basketball, hockey, where they would know the, what's the next step without even really yeah. concentrating on it. They would get yeah. the ball and they would pass it right away. Or they get the puck. They know what the next step before it happens. Yeah. I, I want to do that. I want kind of want to work on knowing what to do before I get the puck or how to get open without the puck. It's yeah. little stuff that can really develop my game into the high, high end. Well, that's how you get to those USHLs and the yeah, pros yeah. is those little things that not a lot of guys, it's maybe a boring practice. It may be the boring tactics, but those are the things that will take little you. Little things matter. I'm, I'm always got taught to the little things matter. Yeah. It goes a long way. And look, that stuff will come with, as much as you've played, it comes with yeah. experience. You know what I mean? all the People don't realize how 
quick the game truly is and no, like how is. like you have a split second to make a decision. So it just comes with time, man. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not like a um oh you have to 25 hours of working on this. Yeah. It's kind of just just letting it just ride along. Yeah. The more times you practice and more game situations it comes natural. What's your favorite shot? If you had to choose one shot, you could only take one shot the whole game. What's your shot? Probably snapshot. You ever clock your slap shot or anything like that or anything like? Uh, my one timer slap shot. I'm hardly, but more of a one timer. It's so funny because now the game is so much faster and it's a yeah. lot more finesse. I remember growing up, I always dreamed of being able to have like, like a little like. In my driveway, like that clock that you see in the All Star game, and just oh, shoot. Yeah. It was all power back in the day. We yeah. were just trying to. Your dad probably understands. It was just all power. Put the puck through the through the net type yeah, of thing. No, so it, it's funny, man, how how different the game is. You know, it's crazy. Maybe. I always ask people this: What's the hardest you've ever been hit? If oh, you've been yeah, hit, this is a good question. <laughs> oh, um, there's one time where I played. Um, I was playing in Norwalk, and. I was coming on the board side, and you know how where uh, the glass ends, there's like a little padding? Yes, the partition, yeah. The guy hit me, dragged me long, full speed, boom, head. When was it? How old were you? When was it? I was young. Probably the first year bandums. Man. It was. Ring your, like your ears start ringing. Yeah, I was like, I was like, what just happened? (laughs) So many times I've been blown up. I've been, there's one time where I was um, on a breakaway and a guy cross-checked me from behind, head first into the post. Oh. That one hurt. There's others, yeah. You laid a body at all? I mean, it's oh. not. Your, yeah, you like. I have clips of me laying. A yeah, body. we gotta get some clips. <laughs> yes, for yeah. the clips, we gotta we gotta get some <laughs> clips because uh, man, I I always tell people because you know a lot of like the old school hockey guys, like all oh, the games different. I'm like yeah, but these guys they may not be as big, but they are so fast. If oh. they hit you, that's like a it's like a minivan hitting There's you. There's these kids that are smaller than me, and yeah. I'm like, oh, these kids. Kids of punk. Yeah. It blows me up like oh, <laughs> Whoa. Speed kills, man. Oh, I mean, uh, no, we talked a little bit at the beginning. You know, you're a Ranger fan, unfortunately. But, you know, <laughs> hey, they're they're on the come up. Shesterk and, you, you know, my boy Matt Rempe and stuff. Listen, you know, the, I'm a Devils fan. I mean, yeah. as of recording right now, you know, the Devils are 2-0. and We won in Prague both games. You still follow the NHL a lot or you of just— course, Of course. I mean— not as much as I would like to. Yeah, kinda, it's when, hard. I mean, you're doing season, it. I'm more focused on like my film and yeah, kind of looking at other teams how I could follow that. Like Connor McDavid, for example, yeah, he's a phenomenal player, probably one of the best. Yeah, I look at his game, how he moves and how he plays the game, so I kind of copy his style. Yeah, but I w- I should be watching more NHL games. Well, I tell people all the time. I mean, it, it's got to be tough because, like I said, you're full time doing it. You know what I mean? Right, it's like yeah. like I deal with boxing every day, and I deal with it from the business aspect, the gym, and this and that. Dude, people are like, oh, you watching the fight tonight? I don't want to watch boxing. Like when the weekend <laughs> comes, like I don't do much to begin with, but like I deal with boxing so much that I don't even watch as much. No, boxing yeah. as I probably should. It's probably the same for you. You're doing it. You don't really have the time I like even. Kind of like a mental mental break of hockey. Just to, you like, have to every week. Like for example, we went to Pittsburgh. We actually won the USHL Fall Classic. Wow. Yes, it was a damn. That's big. New man. Jersey Rockets. We beat them in overtime. That damn. Was, like, Sorry, a, Rockets. That is such what a it is. Game, but when I came back home, I was like, I, I need a space. I need a break yeah. just to regroup myself. And that's what I like doing every week. If I I was off this week I have a game two games Sunday yeah but other than that like, what do you like to do to regroup you watch just, TV at all you watch movie or you know yeah, just I mean, chill just just relax yeah just kind of like mentally just yeah take a little dude you're under a lot I mean I and you, I know you're aware of it but when you're gonna be my age one day 20 years from you're gonna look back I mean what you're doing is unreal man and like I said it's it's not for everybody not everyone could do what you're doing and uh, it's a lot of pressure man and like you it said is. it's a lot but uh you know, getting back to the NHL, I mean, I know you may not be following it as closely, which you shouldn't. You got your own stuff going on, but you got any like you got any like predictions this season? You think you know who you who you got? Of course, I want to say Rangers, but well, listen, as much as I hate to say it, it's a good. Sh- I mean, they're looking good, man. On paper, for sure. They always look good on paper, <laughs> but when it comes to playoffs, they tend to just let it. Like last year, they were on a roll. Yeah, and all of a sudden. What happened? Yeah. It's just like, I don't, the hockey industry is so like. It's crazy. It's crazy. We, I, we were just, um you know, uh, you know, last week we had our NHL preview show and I was saying there's so much parody in the league, meaning 
even the the lowliest of the teams, like yeah. at the start of the year, like they could just sneak in and make something happen. Yeah. Hockey is so crazy like that. And uh, listen, man, I, I got torched this past spring because I, I was all over the Oilers for being soft and this and that. I'm all in on the Oilers this year. I think Connor McDavid had his villain origin story this past oh, yeah. year. He, he, and he's, he's ready back. to turn yeah. up, bro. I think uh, I think it's going to be the Oilers year the first Canadian hockey, you know, the first Canadian yeah, franchise yeah. to win since the '90s. I think, I think it's gonna be this I think year. There's something coming out in like the Amazon Prime to make it like. A, yes, like, I saw that. We were just talking about this last week. Um, I looked at Connor McDavid totally different. Seeing that insight, you the know what behind, I mean. That's what people understand. Like when just not just hockey, but sports behind the scenes really matters. Like you, don't, yeah. uh, someone like Connor McDavid, you think, oh, look at this. He has the goals. Yep. Uh, like Wayne Gretzky. Yes. Behind the scenes, it's. No one really knows about like yeah. how that locker room and that anger and the passion he has for that game. We no were literally knows. last week's episode. We literally were just talking about yeah. that, and I'm telling you, that's why I think there needs to be more of that in hockey. I think yeah. hockey lacks that, um, uh, opposed to these other sports. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think hockey yeah. is so they want you know everyone's humble, which is good. It's supposed to be a gentleman's game in a way, but no, you, that insight changed my whole perspective on Connor oh, McDavid, yeah. and I'm a huge. Connor McDavid guy because he, he showed me he's a dog. He's a dog, man. So yeah, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Um, listen, man, are you a Selly guy? You you got a oh, Selly yeah. a choice? Yeah. So uh, so okay. again, and back in our day, okay, there was a couple Sellys. There was this. <laughs> there was this, bro. Now I've gotten back into it. We had a junior trashers team this past summer in Danbury. There was a Summerfest tournament where I sponsored a. Uh, we had a junior trashers team that won it all. I think okay. it was 12U. Shout out to the junior trashers. My boy, Big Duncan, Colin Duncan, had a shootout winner in the Summerfest tournament to win it all. Okay. And he pulled out the heartbreaker. Ooh. He put the heart and he punched that, it. That's a good I one. was like, that is some that that's that was one. fire, man. What's your what's your cell of your choice? It's situational. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so when there's a big crowd, I bowed in front of them. The pose of okay. the bow, yeah. Oh, I do the bow, I do the shush. That's that's the, Oh, I do. that's gotta shush be annoying. Yeah. Um Bow and arrow, heartbreaker, of course. Uh, I do a bunch of different ones. Whatever, just first thing comes to my mind. But the bow is something that really gets across. You got like you got like something like would go back to WWE, man. It's like you got like a finishing move. Like if you had it, like oh. you got like a home celly or like a like I got a. I bet you the away cellies are crazy with you, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the way. Way game like I can fire, hear, yeah. I can hear the overrated chance, and yeah. then you get a goal. I mean, you like jump in the. I mean, I can't imagine what I did. What the you, dab, the dab, uh, Sully. Okay, on my the uh, semifinals first Massic uh-huh. comeback. I did the dab. That was that was pretty. That was pretty sick. Man, Sellys are great, man. And again, you need that. It's like hockey is growing, and I love it, man. I, I'm old yeah. school, but I'm all about the Sellys. I love the Sellys. I get people. I do a lot of review videos on the Trashers uh, Instagram, and like people sending me fights to review Sellys. I love. I'm all in a heartbreaker right now. Colin Heart Duncan, shout out to my boy <laughs> Big Dunk. My guy. First of all, he's for his age. He's built like a refrigerator. And I'm like, there's no way this kid can skate. He's one of the top guys on the team. He really? had the winner in the summer festival, and I'm gonna show you after we record. Okay. He hit him with the he hit him with the heartbreaker, and I was like, yo, what was it? He was like, it was the heartbreaker. I never saw it before. There wasn't a the selly stick. I mean, the selfie, selfie stick is yeah. big now, right? I seen I seen TikTok edits where when people do the heartbreaker, they actually do the heart. And yes. They pound it. I was like. I'm like, whoa, like, I didn't know the Heartbreaker Dude, is still popular. The heartbreaker, I, it's all popular to me. I'm, I'm like, brand yeah. new into it again. I'm seeing what these young kids are coming up with. The selfie stick was fire. I, I don't know what team. I think it was, I don't know if it was college last year. Someone did it, and it was all oh, over. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. my God, that is fire. So. There's one selfie I forgot. Is you, the awesome after did, you can't hear me. Oh, right yeah. yeah. That's the one I You got in with the Hulk Hogan, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe maybe That's you and I one. could come up with some sellies that, like wrestling. Like uh, I'm trying to think. Like yo, Hulk Hogan would be a good one too, I'm man. Trying to think. I'm trying to... It's creative. <laughs> I know. They're creative. Of it's, it's but I guess it's in the moment too. Yeah. I mean, I, I I think the emotions and stuff. And I, I'm like, I'm all for these guys putting their emotions out there. You know what I mean? Listen, we talked about this before we recorded. Yeah. I want to do. We've never done this on this show yet, but I figured you're a young buck. This is the big thing right now on social okay. media. I see it. Blind ranking game. Okay. I'm going to give you, now we, we we are both of Italian descent, and, yes, and thankfully you're not 500 pounds because we love <laughs> to eat. And, I, I, and, and I'm sure you love to eat too. 
Um, you probably can't eat as good as you probably want to, but that's good. It's going to pay off for you. <laughs> I'm going to give you five okay. foods, and you're going to blind rank them. You don't okay. know what's coming. All right? okay. Obviously, number one's the best, and number five's you know, good, but not the best. Okay? okay? You don't know what's coming. I want you to rank them whatever you think, okay? All right. All right. Let's start just straight up chicken parm. Okay. One to five. If you had to put that somewhere without knowing what's coming. I'm not... I'm a f- I say four. Okay, four. that's not good. A big chicken parm guy. All right, that's good. A lot of people on my don't... daily daily one. All yeah. right, so we're going four with chicken parm. I'm putting that. I'm putting okay. that down. Okay. Linguini with clams. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a linguini with clams guy because I know you can't overly indulge. You're a, you're my an grandmother athlete. makes a very good linguini. <sighs> three. Keep it as three. Okay. Keep it as three. I All want right. To my one and two for. All I'm right, good. that's fine. Let's go. Just a straight cheese or meat ravioli. Ravioli. Ravioli is probably one of my favorites. It's a two. Yeah. All right, it's ravioli. Two. Ravioli is my favorite. That's probably one of my go-to. Let's just go with a straight up, just a straight up slice of pizza. Do five. That's boring. Okay. That's okay. Boring. Boring. I had to throw one in there. That's boring. Yeah. So I guess we're going number one. Is it penne alla vodka? Fine. Yeah. So did I? So so yeah. let's just let's just get this straight. We got penny alla vodka one, ravioli two, linguine with clams three, yep. chicken parm four, and I screwed you with the pizza at yeah, five. Does that, that sound about right? That, that sounds a pretty hey, good. Listen, there's nothing better than that. Favorite dessert? If you had to choose one, you're not playing tomorrow. So you know, okay. it, like if you could just indulge I, a little. I give you a little funny story. So every Easter for Lent, I give up ice cream. So when oh, Easter isn't that the comes, best, bro? When Easter morning comes, I ate 16 ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> as soon as I woke up, I ate it. Ice cream, my favorite dessert. Ice cream sandwich. That's it. That's an old school ice, ice cream. cream sandwich. I love them. My dad is a big ice cream sandwich guy. And I grew up with ice cream sandwiches, but it was, I'm a hot foot Sunday type of guy. Hot foot but I'm surprised that you're yeah. that's an old school I love ice cream, ice cream general, sandwich. But ice cream sandwich. Ice cream, I could do ice. Yeah. Listen, I could eat I ice cream why. three times a day and it wouldn't. But giving it up for Lent, that's smart, man. Yeah. It, it's a challenge. It's yeah. A really challenge. I used to give up soda because I love soda yeah. o- almost too I, I much. I don't drink soda. That's yeah. a fact about me. I do not drink you soda. You don't drink soda? No. What's Never. your What's your drink of choice? Chocolate milk. See, I like you. <laughs> I am a milk. Bro, I am a chocolate milk. I don't drink coffee. Yeah. I've gone into business meetings at diners. I'll have a coffee. I'll have a cappuccino. I order chocolate, chocolate milk. milk. Of course. You blow bubbles in the chocolate milk at the end? Come on. Come See, you're my guy, Giovanni. On. Come on. Giovanni Smeriglio is a stand-up guy. I love this kid. I see a little bit of myself in, in terms of, like, you know, the foods you like. And, and chocolate milk, I wish I would have known this ahead of time because we could have shared a chocolate milk together. Next chocolate time. milk is an elite drink. Next time we got to do it. And ice cream. Guys, this kid right here, I don't care. He's got to be humble. I don't. This is <laughs> the greatest Hockey player, as of Appreciate right now, it. we don't really look. Hockey in Danbury is still kind of young, it okay? Is. So we don't have a Mount Rushmore. I am willing. We got a we got a big mountain, and we don't have a Mount Rushmore yet. I am etching <laughs> Giovanni Smeriglio's face as the first Mount Rushmore of hockey players hey, from I, Danbury. I'll say this. I'll say this. I want to make history being the first kid from Danbury to make it to the NHL. I want to. It's going to happen, I guys. Wanna. Okay. I, I see we're going USHL next. I see that happening. Okay. Sweet. I got a crystal ball here. We're going USHL. What's after USHL? If you if you, if you okay. had a crystal, if you were able to map yourself, right? Okay. And which we all know it, it's never going to go according to plan, okay? Of course. The destination never stop, you know, changes, but the route changes. But yeah. if you had, if God, which you have a, a strong faith, came down and said, okay, Giovanni, I'm going to let you map out right now. From, what's next? Okay, ready? From the today, today South perfect. Kent, what's next? Perfect. I'll get a bunch of D1, D1 school offers for college, right? I'll commit to whoever the best one, how I fit in their their system, right? Don't be a politician. Where do you want to go, D1, if you had a choice? If God God's I'll, I'll letting you, you change. Give my top five. All right, top five. BU, uh-huh. that's been my dream school. Boston College. Uh-huh. Uh, Michigan. Okay. Penn State. Then the, f- the fifth one, this one is like, if he goes back and forth, it would be, um, it would be North Dakota. Mm. I love their facility. Nice jerseys so, too. Nice jerseys, really sick, sick jerseys. But that's like my, my that's my top five. Okay. Top five. But again, any offer I would be happy with. Listen, guys, USHL, if you're listening, I, you know, 
A lot of people don't realize, people are listening to what's going on on the Talking Trash podcast. I'm telling you, USHL, someone has got to pick this man up because then I have to get your jersey. Um, I'd love to get a smir- What number are you? 15. Okay, I was 15. 17, 15. Yeah. All right. Is that just a random number? You picked that number? So, or? when Jack Eichel, he was always nine. When he went to BU, he was nine. Then when he went his first year NHL, Buffalo Sabre, he was 15. Then he changed it back to nine. Mm. So... I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to be the next 15 on the Buffalo Sabres. Yo, shout out to Jack Eichel. You see, it, I tell athletes all the time, no matter where you are in your journey, you interacting with a young kid, what it does for a kid. Kids don't forget that, yeah, right? I, I try that to teach. still in my brain. Yeah, still like I, I, we, I deal with a lot of pro boxers, and, I, and we're in the gym every day in the trenches, and I'm like, look, get with these young kids, teach them a little bit, show them little things for 10 minutes, because they'll never, ever forget those, those, those no, moments, yeah, man. I mean, when... When I did meet Jack Eichel, we we talked, and he he taught me things to a stick handling moves, and he even said that he I'm a good player, of course, and you know what I'm saying. It's just hearing from my idol. Yeah, I was like, if you oh, probably were like ten feet tall, man, you probably oh, sure. <laughs> you, no, but you probably oh, felt oh, like, yeah, yeah. man, I am t- oh, yeah. like that's got to be the greatest feeling when I an idol of yours tells like, you I'm something. Dice, I'm like, hold on, I might go to the NHL now. <laughs> now, are you a cage or a bubble guy? Oh, bubble. All day. So when bubble. I grew up, it was just cage. There wasn't even bubbles, really. I remember there was one guy in the Mighty Ducks on the on the movie had a bubble. I always wanted a bubble. Oh, I forget his there name. There was no yeah. bubbles back then. Yeah. I feel like I would have been a bubble guy, too. I love bubble because I, I love the visor. Hey, visor shout out too. to my boys over at Just Dishing. Have you ever seen the colored bubbles? Yes, I saw those on uh, Instagram. Are you a color bubble guy? I or never is tried that? it. I never had the Listen, my boys. Hey, Just Dishing. We got to get a colored bubble to my boy. Okay. I would love uh, to try one. I dude, really I'm know. writing this down because those are my guys, man. Uh, I would love to try uh, those one. are those are my guys, man. And we gotta get you in a colored bubble. I think that would be the wave, I would, man. I would rock it. Hey, listen, man. I, I jokes aside, I I'm telling you guys, we gotta follow this man, Giovanni. He is going big places. We are so proud of you, man. I, I really appreciate, appreciate your time well, thank you and for uh inviting me. Listen, one day when you're big time, you got to come back. That's the goal. Oh, we're we're sure. playing the seeds now. So well, when you're in the sure. NHL, we got to have you back as like a recap. And uh, we got to play this back. Like. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> man. So, guys, uh, make sure you're following Giovanni. We're going to put all his info in the description. Um, we're going to put South Kent's ca- you know, schedule in the description. You guys, come out and support. You know what I mean? That's what you got to do. See him now before you know he's in the NHL, then the tickets are too much. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't ask for free ones either. So, <laughs> hey, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>